eight minutes, eight minutes for this on the screen. Cool.
The Bison are back in Bird Gymnasium for their final non-conference matchup of the year, a matinee on Martin Luther King Jr. Day against a team that's on fire, the Yale Bulldogs. Good afternoon from Bird Gymnasium. I'm Ryan Peer. Tykira Carter's with me. Tykira, it's a the third of three games against the Ivy League this year, and this might be the toughest against the reigning conference champ, Yale. Absolutely. Yale is picked to finish third in the Ivy League this season, but don't let that number fool you. Bulldogs are hot right now. Like you said, Ryan, they won nine of their last ten games. 1-0 in conference play by defeating Brown University, 17-6. So, what we know about Yale, they can heat up rather quickly. Yeah, they're a great outside shooting team, and they lead the nation in defensive rebounds, so they're very good on the glass. And the Bison hope to snap a seven-game losing streak. They played well against their two Ivy League opponents this year. They're going to have to dig deep today. We've seen them in their past two conference games. They've been leading at the half. So they, they've been playing better. It's a matter of talking to Coach Blakey this week, just finishing off good performances. Absolutely. It's a step in the right direction for the Bison. One thing that I can say, we've seen this Bison team grow game after game. It's just all about will they be able to pull games out when it comes down to it. Let's have a look at the starting lineups as the uh, fans are honoring Martin Luther King Jr. A very uh, important day. And this is always, I think, one of the more fun uh, moments games in the season the matinee on Martin Luther King Jr. a tradition across college basketball and it's always a, a really really good uh, moment in day for for college basketball absolutely and we see that Howard is playing respect to Martin Luther King Jr. with their fist in the air we had him up on the time to celebrate today Martin Luther King all the best and it, it provides us here with one another today Ryan and it's, a, it's an historic matchup. I mean, Howard, a, a very uh, historic HBBU school. And then, of course, Yale in the Ivy League. Two teams with so much history. It almost seems fitting that they would meet on a day with so much history time stamp. Absolutely, Ryan. Both two teams, both two historical colleges. Uh, I believe I read that Yale University is the third oldest college mm. in the United States. Founded in 1701. So both teams have some rich history. And hopefully we see a rich game. This is the first time that these two teams meet in the history of both programs. Yeah, that's a good point. A little bit of history made here today. And Yale did a, put a nice Twitter post out. They went and visited the historic uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in the nation's capital on the National Mall. Made a very nice post. And I think they probably enjoy being able to be a, in this city at that place in this moment. Absolutely. Coming all the way down from New Haven, Connecticut, you don't see Castle every day, like you do. We can drive by and uh, <laughs> visit MLK, but this is a special time for them to be here, especially on this Monday where we honor and celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for Yale. They're big, and their bread and butter is their post. Jordan Bruner, six foot nine center. He's kind of their stretch four. He can shoot the three, great at blocking shots and rebounding as well. He wears number 23. Paul Atkinson is their biggest player. The 6'10 junior has really stepped up. Top five in the Ivy League in points and rebounds. He is 12th in the nation in field goal percentage. The 6'10 forward plays kind of the bruising post player. Azar Swain is their shooting guard, averaging 15 points per game. The 6' foot junior from Brockton, Massachusetts. Eric Monroe is a player that's really stepped up for them. The senior from San Diego, 6'2 point guard, leads the Ivy League in assists. And then Jalen Gabadon, the 6'5", junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's not far from the Boston. The Bison have their work cut out for them today. They've been playing much better over the past couple of weeks. And one man, as we say it often, will have a lot of responsibility tonight. It's their center, Zion Cousins, the 6'8", junior, starting in the middle. C.J. Williams, the team's leading scorer, top three in the MEAC in that category. 6'6", six, six, junior guard. Camille Robinson at point, 5'11", point guard. Freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Fresh off a 12-point game. Wayne Bristol, Jr. joins them in the starting lineup along with their senior, Nate Garvey, 6'3", six, six, senior from New York. Are you with me, Takira, that it is Zion Cousins again against a really good low post team that's going to have to happen this game? It seems like it's every game for Zion Cousins, but the thing that I love about him, he steps up to that challenge, Ryan. He gets in there and he 
take hard is he's smart on the defensive end for the most part. He, he, he knows that he's going to have to go out there this afternoon and be smart if he gets into foul trouble. That's just not good for the Bison. So earlier on, Zion Cousins knows that he's going to have to play aggressive and be the player that he sets up down there in that paint. But at the same time, has to be smart and doesn't take advantage of the foul trouble. On the backcourt for the Bison, has been really good recently. Khalil Robinson. Uh, their, their freshman point guard coming off a 12-point game. C.J. Williams scored 12 points against Morgan State as well. And then off the bench, an impressive 15-point performance from Kyle Foster. Coach Blakeney said they're going to have to try to work him in the offense a little bit more. So between those three, that is 39 points. Pretty impressive uh, scoring output against Morgan State by this backcourt. Yeah, I think that uh, this team has definitely been more consistent. Um, we spoke about how we don't know was going to step up and be that extra scorer when C.J. Williams is having a great game, but who else can be that second and third scorer dynamic? And I think the Bison are finding it more and more. Big keys for this one, Ty Kira. What are you thinking up against this talented low post team? It's a Yale group that has won 9 of 10. They uh, nearly beat North Carolina. They yeah. did beat Clemson. Yeah, pooped North Carolina, so sure. that says a lot. So what do you think? Keys for Howard today? I think Howard just needs to be aware of everybody on the floor. Everybody for the scale to be ten feet up. It's going to be about fouling the defense. You can't leave anybody out there on the island, but also be conscious of where your man is at on the floor at all. I think Howard just locked in and focused on the game plan. We set the tip on Martin Luther King Jr. Day from the Bird Gymnasium. In Washington, D.C., no better place for a basketball game on this historic day. Two teams with so much of its history. Old Bulldogs, South Squad, and the guys from Washington. That have played better over the past few weeks. Looking to get a win against an Ivy League opponent. Don't think that Yale is going to come out here soft. They have some history that they're trying to make themselves today. If they were to win, this is the most non-conference games that Yale has won in the history of the program. On a great note, Yale is 12-4 this season. They are 1-0 in Ivy League play. The Bison are 2-17, 1-8 at home. Yale has won nine of their last ten games. Their only loss against one of the best programs in the country, Carolina. The Bison have lost their last seven, but they've had a tough time against Morgan State. Have to keep it time overtime defeat against Carolina State, so improvement is definitely there. Well, we need to improve against the Bison because the first couple of games, they were going into the half trailing and having to play catch up. Mm -hmm. Now they're leading going into the half. So digging themselves in a hole in the second half. So now it's time to just find that balance, Ryan. Bruner to tip against Cousins. Let's see if the Bison can find it as Yale wins the tip. And their steady point guard, Eric Monroe, leads the Ivy League in assists. Starts things off against the 2-3 zone of the Bison. That's Bruner underneath looking for Atkinson. The leading score knocked out of play as Garvey got his fingertips on it. The Bulldogs have 19 to shoot. And that's a nice job by Garvey. They'll need that type of play all afternoon on the defensive end. That awareness, that help the helper type of defense. Yale is the second leading scoring team in the Ivy League. They are second as well in three-pointers made. So against this 2-3, expecting to fire up a lot of shots from the outside. Quick hands there from Garvey once again. Absolutely, a team like this, when they see a 2-3 zone, they're probably licking their chops like, yeah, we're ready to go. We like to shoot threes. As we see the first one fired of the afternoon, even though it was in and out for Azair, that's a great shot. Yeah, Swain leads the Ivy League in three-pointers made. Bison able to control it on offense, trying to strike first in front of this good-sized crowd at Bird Gymnasium. The Bison band just in front of them. Garvey, one of two seniors in this lineup. The floater is good from Nate Garvey. Nate Garvey! And we talk about Nate Garvey all the time and how he's really been able to come into his own during his senior season. Uh, just a great kid and a great way to come together and, you know, try to be that all-around Bison player that they need, that energy bringer. As they have throughout the season, the Bison were in that full court press and dropped back in the 2-3. Atkinson, not much of a threat from out there. Gabadon underneath. That is a player that can tickle the twine. Swain off, offensive rebound, Bruner. 
leads the Ivy League in boards. Atkinson, the stuff underneath. I like that driving dish play when the help defender comes up, just a nice little drop off pass. So that is a good read by Monroe to Atkinson down low. And we saw what the Bulldogs are so good at there as Cousins is able to flip it in. He's nearly averaging a double-double over the past three games. Gets two there. And that's another scorer who's coming along, Ryan. We know that he gets it done on the defensive end on the floor, but when Zion Cousins has good scoring performances on the offensive end of the floor, it really makes this Howard Bison team that much better. Atkinson going to his left. He's got four early. What have you liked about Cousins over the past couple weeks that shows his improvement? Absolutely, his, his all-around motor. Okay. This kid can play a lot of minutes, and then I like the fact that he's been willing to shoot those little jump hook shots, the little baby jumpers, and being aggressive around the rim. Even early, Cousins to the freshman Bristol Jr. Back to Zion from 10. Cousins, two for two. Yeah, we're calling on his name this afternoon, two for two from the field. Like I said, I like when he is confident in shooting that little jump shot. Everything doesn't have to be a layup, and he is extending his range. He's a player that must step up today, coming off an 8.9 rebound performance against Morgan State. An over and back call, the Bison force a turnover. When we spoke with Coach Blankton today, he said, you know what, we're losing games, but every coach, when we shake hands afterwards, is saying how hard we play. And he said that's such a compliment to his players. And we're already seeing it. They're coming out with a lot of intensity. Absolutely. We have to keep into perspective about this Bison team. First-year coach, a lot of new players. You lose your player of the year in R.J. Cole as he left the program to go to the University of Connecticut. <laughs> Bison, a perfect four for four from the field. C.J. Williams, the leading scorer, hits the triple. Uh, so as I was kind of saying, we keep into perspective that this team is young and fresh. I think they'll come along, and these losses might, you know, come out for a breakthrough towards the end of the season. Every team makes the conference tournament, Ryan, so that's what is most important about getting better as you get towards that conference tournament. Atkinson's averaging 16 points per game this year. He already has six. Garvey at the top, working on Swain. The freshman Robinson. The senior Garvey. The first miss from Howard Atkinson. The board. The floor general Monroe quickly up the floor. Swain the kick to Gavadon. Gets past Garvey. Swain tries again from three. He's over three from the outside. Another offensive rebound for Bruner. This time it's Gavadon. Bruner again on the glass underneath the Atkinson. Lead is one for the Bison as the Bulldogs continue to feast on the offensive board. And that's the place where they're going to have to work at, Ryan. The, uh, the Bison have to find a body and just box out whatever they can do. Just find a person, put a body on somebody, and try to at least fight for those defensive rebounds. The step back from Robinson. What do you think of that shot? Maybe a little early in the shot clock Absolutely there? Absolutely too early, and I don't think that's Robinson's game quite yet. I like the confidence, but I just don't think that's the shot that Howard wanted there. Bruner misfiring. Bulldogs now over for 5 from deep, and that leads us to the first media timeout. Bison shooting 67% early, leading 9-8 to eight on the Bison Sports Network. Junior Day. Welcome to Bird Gymnasium as we celebrate this day of excellence. Throughout the game, take time to reflect on how much Dr. Martin oh Luther King Jr. sacrificed for us to prevail today. off to a quick start, leading against Yale, 9-8, shooting 66% to start this game. 
Yale is 0 for 5 from the three-point line. That's one of their specialties. But three offensive rebounds for Kikira, that's one reason why they've been able to, to stick in this one. They're only down by one point early. Yeah, absolutely. They've been able to get those second-chance opportunities and kick out to shoot more threes. And I think if you're Howard, you have to be mindful of that. The more second chance opportunities that they can get. Yale will start to heat up. This is a very good basketball team, so I think Howard needs to be mindful of that and limit those second chances. The starting five is still out there for Howard. Yale is using the bench. Matthew Cotton and Wyatt Yes have both subbed in for the Bulldogs. A quick poke away from behind by Yes, and it's stolen by the Bulldogs. Monroe slows things up. Yale under the leadership of coach James Jones, their legendary coach, 20 seasons with Yale, 332 and 280 lifetime record. Gaz's offense clicking. They've won nine of their past 10, and they're second in the league as a foul is called. Yes, driving to the rim, and it is on Zion Cousins, his first. Zion Cousins was moving on that play, so I think that is the right call by the referee right there. As Yes was going up for the rim, Zion's body was still doing a little bit of slide, and I think he got him with the hit, which is why the referees called that block. Yes, such a good free throw shooter. 81% evens this one up at nine. Bison have led the entire way so far. Yale is 12 and four this season. Yes, barely draws iron. And they have beaten some tough opponents, including Clemson from the ACC. They lost to Penn State, who was ranked at one point by two, just barely lost to UNC last week. Williams, the fadeaway, a little bit long. Rebound hauled in by Matthew Cotton, the 6'5 sophomore who just checked in. Monroe, the top, it's yes, the high low to Atkinson. He's cooking with eight points early. And Yale has their first lead. See how Howard responds here. Williams with three points. Kicks to Bristol Jr. Top five in the MIAC in three-point shooting percentage. A little bit off there, though. And oh, how the ties have turned so quickly in this basketball game. Howard has gone a bit cold these last couple possessions, and here goes Yale. Oh, that was a bad one right there. Way off from Cotton. Mm -hmm. Tough angle, alley-oop to Williams. Almost threw it down. It might have been partially tipped. And a jump ball is called. It'll stay with the Bison. I think the Bison, they have to really convert and focus on converting while Yale is not hot at this moment because we know how good this Yale team is. And when they do heat up, it could be trouble. So I think the Bison just need to focus on scoring. Bison made their first four shots. They've missed their past nine, though. Bristol Jr. looking for Andre Torre, who just subbed in. It was stolen away by Cotton, but he couldn't keep control. You're right, though. Yale 0 for 6. That's not going to keep up. Here's a guy who's not been missing much recently. Kyle Foster, 3 for 3 from deep against Morgan State at 15 points a season high. I love his game. I think that's the type of player that you need coming off the bench, and he's picking up right where he left off, Ryan. Right on cue. Right on cue. That's the type of player that you need coming off the bench, focused, knowing his assignment, and knowing and just kind of ready to go. He puts Bison back on top by one. Coach Blakeney said we want to work him in the offense more. And right there, a play drawn up for him, and he connects. Atkinson, who's having a big game so far. Gabadon, the step back. Robinson keeps on him tightly. Five to shoot. Atkinson, the feed underneath. Cotton lets the defender go by and scores. Matthew, Matthew Cotton's a good scoring forward off the bench. 6-5, wide frame, plays in the post. I think what I was most impressed about on that possession for the Bulldogs was their patience on the offensive end of the floor, just not rushing anything that time down. Ian Lee will check in for Robinson. Freshman for freshman, a pair of freshmen. The two main point guards for the Bison this season. Here is Foster. Yale up by one point as the teams have gone back and forth over the past couple minutes. Torre, the athletic post player. Will Williams. Just inside the three-point line, cutting the rebound. Oh, 
Bison shooting 50%, same for the Bulldogs. Bruner, he has range. Too hot to handle for Gabaton underneath. That zone has been looking really good for the Bison. Everybody's moving on the flight of the ball. They're very attentive and alert, so I like the way that the Bison are working that zone right now. Coach Blakey has done a really solid job this season implementing this zone, working out the kinks, and making it something that's been effective for the Bison, especially over the past few games. Howard in the sixth ranked offense in the MEAC. Foster somehow got it to go. His confidence Foster. is just really high, Ryan. And I think, you know, his play has been very vital to the Bison. The junior from Hampton, 15 points, a season high against Morgan State as the Bison back up by one. Yes, pass deflected and stolen by Williams. Part of his game that's really improved is his defense, C.J. Williams. Already more steals this season than he had all of last year. You know, it's one thing to be a scorer, but it's to be, to be a two-way player when you can score the basketball like C.J. Williams, quite amazing. After the Cousins miss, Wayne pushing. He's been held in check so far. Good ball movement. Step back from Cotton. Swish from 10 feet, Cotton connects. Bulldogs back up by one. And right there, that is how you take on a 2-3 zone. Quick ball movement, find an open space. Absolutely, and just waiting, patience in that zone. Making Howard work with all those passes as well. Howard is not just sitting still in this 2-3 zone. They've been doing some work. Ian Lee, that's his strength, that little runner. Two points off the bench for him to give the Bison the lead. Five lead changes already. Yale, they've won nine of their past 10 games. Bison hanging with them, leading right now. Gabadon, a look for Cotton. Strong rebound for Cousins. And now Coach Blakey tells his point guard lead to slow things down. You can tell this game means a lot to Howard. Trying to snap a losing streak. If they could have a big performance against a really strong squad like Yale, that would mean a lot. They are searching for a win, Ryan. And it's not to say that Howard has been playing bad sure. basketball. You know, they're, they're doing their best. And I think that they know that they are capable of winning basketball games. Foster almost dropped one in at the buzzer. Bruner, the kick out. And the crowd applauds his defensive effort from Howard. Flying all over the court. And a foul is called on Ian Lee as we've made our way to a media timeout. Bison holding Gale and Jack, a team that's 12 and four. The Bison lead 16 to 15 with 9.37 left to go in the first half on the Bison Sports Network. You haven't done so already, please visit the lobby to make your donation. Your Howard University Athletic Department today Every dollar counts towards making the student experience the best it can be. Bison up 16-15 on Martin Luther King Jr. Day here at Burr Gymnasium in Washington, D.C. Ryan Pierce, Tykira Carter. Tykira, Bison looking solid so far. I feel like it started on the defensive end, very active on the 2-3. Absolutely, and like they say, your defense translates to your offense. If you can get things going on defense, if you're active, if you're hype, if you're ready to go, it really does translate on your offense. And it goes back to the old saying that most coaches say, 
you know, offense sells tickets, defense wins games. Mm. It's a great saying. Both teams have made seven field goals. Bison gave up three early offensive rebounds, none since. They lead 16-15. Zion Cousins has six early points. Paul Atkinson is leading the way for the road. Bulldogs with 10. Atkinson underneath, just too big for C.J. Williams, puts his team on top. He is a bruiser down low. His battery mate, Bruner, is a stretch four. Foster with five off the bench. Williams from three. He's got a three. pair of triples already. Coach Blakeney said to us that Williams' leadership has been infectious over the past couple weeks. He's taken to that leadership role so well this season, especially with the new coaching staff. Swain underneath to Atkinson. Cousins holds his ground and grabs the rebound. That's a great rebound by Cousins. Turning and boxing out, they've made the adjustment in the basketball game, and Howard would just need to be able to keep that up on the defensive end of the floor. Andre Torrey has most minutes played already since non-conference season earlier on. Williams, a little bit off. Atkinson, the rebound. Williams crashed into the camera well. Atkinson to the corner. Again to Atkinson. Cousins wow. denies him and then picks up his second foul. That is a great contest by Cousins on the first one. That is his second. Like we said, we ha he has to be mindful of those fouls. But, man, he's doing a great job on Atkinson, I think, thus far. Atkinson's a real tough player, man. He really gets after it. Six foot ten, wide frame, junior from West Palm Beach. The Yale media team says he wasn't expected to be this good this quickly. They thought he might take another year to develop. Off on the first free throw, though, where he's only 68%. Michael Barber checks in. The redshirt sophomore for the Bison, who's picked up minutes throughout this season. He's going to have to play some time today. Another piece that can be very good for the Bison, when you go in and you focus off the bench and handle your minutes and know your role. Bison lead by one following the C.J. Williams three on the last possession. Barber, a pair of screens. So far, the bench has been solid for Howard, Torrey, Lee, and now Barber in. Foster, of course, as well with five points. He has seven to shoot. Foster from the foul line tried to draw contact. Bruner the rebound. August Mahoney, the sharp shooting wing. Back to Bruner. The stretch four, the first three for Yale today. And that's a good job by Bruner. How many people do you see at his size step out there shooting that three and pushing the basketball in transition as well? That's tough to defend. He's nearly 40% from deep. Bruner, eight threes in the team's past three games, has one already. Foster's team trailing, goes behind the back. Somehow found Bristol Jr. Wayne gets the ball back. A little bit too strong. Now Wayne has to finish those down there on the low. I think those were two easy bunnies that he should have been able to convert on. Bristol Jr. had a rare off game against Morton State. Bulldogs trying to build on their two-point lead. They've won nine of their past ten games. Cotton from the foul line. He's got a couple mid-range jumpers. That's money. I like the way that he cut across that lane, saw the open spot, and he's really been good in this ball game at finding those openings and getting to a sweet spot and knocking down that short jumper. Coach Blakeney senses momentum changing, calls timeout. Bison only trailing by four, 23 to 19. Six, 29 left on the Bison Sports Timeout Network. Timeout on the floor. Charge to the Bison comes with six minutes, 29 seconds remaining.
tickets for Alumni Weekend, January 31st through February 2nd. Howard takes on Morgan State. That is on the first in Virginasium. That is a 4 p.m. tip. Bison getting a chance to get some revenge. They played Morgan State tight earlier this weekend. And they fell late, but were leading at halftime. So a good chance for Howard to get some revenge there against their Maryland rivals. Right now, trailing Yale 23 to 19. Yale is starting to maybe crack this 2-3 zone a little bit. Their ball movement is getting better. Still, though, the Bison are forcing tough shots. The players that aren't normally used to taking them, like Matthew Cotton, has knocked down a few. I believe so. Cotton has really stepped up for this Yale team in the early going. Like I said, finding the gaps and the holes mm. in the 2-3 zone that the Bison are providing for the Bulldogs. And I think that Yale has done a better job of settling in. Although they're not doing well from three, the two-pointers are really going and getting fouled and going to the free throw line has worked in Yale's favor. Killian Robinson back in. Bristol Jr., his second three-point attempt. The rebound cupped by Swain. Quick pass to Bruner. Just a bit high for him. Yale already has four turnovers. Which is very uncharacteristic of this team, too. Sure. They really take care of the basketball, but we see that their, their leader, Eric Monroe, just got back with the floor. A player who usually has the ball in his hands and leads the Bulldogs, so he had some time on the bench, so maybe they can turn those turnovers around. Rebound's such a huge key. We talked about in the beginning, Yale, the country's best defensive rebounding team. Already 15 rebounds compared to Howard Seven, not getting many second chance opportunities. As Robinson off the barber pick, Cousins with two early fouls. Garvey fires from three and connects. Three. Howard, four for eight from downtown. Sometimes you think with this Bison team to shoot threes, they almost have a better three-point percentage than their field goal percentage. That's been the case so far today. Yale the one-point lead. Mahoney, the freshman, the lefty. Barber able to tip it to Garvey. I really like how Howard's been able to clean up on the boards. They cleaned up their act after the Bulldogs had started out with like three offensive rebounds almost in a row in the beginning of the game. They've done a good job. And another thing that I really love about the zone is on a missed shot on the offensive end of the floor, the Bulldogs are able to get back and set up their zone rather quickly. Bruner. Now Mahoney with it. Swain looking for his first three. He won't stay cold long as he knocks it down from straight away. Money. That wasn't an easy shot that Swain hit there, but he's such a good three-point shooter for the Bulldogs. So like we said, we didn't expect him to be quiet for long. Leads the Ivy League in three-pointers made, essentially three per game. Still just a two-possession game. The freshman Bristol Jr. looking for his first points. And a foul is called on the floor. That is the first so far on Yale. And they're such a fundamentally sound team. Rebound the ball well, don't turn over often, don't foul a lot. I mean, it's so tough to, to beat a team when they don't beat themselves. It is, it really is. And I think that uh, Howard has been doing a good job so far, really answering that call and keeping themselves sure. in the basketball game. Robinson to Barber against E.J. Jarvis, freshman on sophomore. Not a bad move from Barber, not a specialty though. I don't think that was particularly a good shot. I like the fact that he's looking to be aggressive, but maybe put the basketball on the ground and get something going and then kick it. If you know that's just not your game quite yet. That's two straight threes for Yale. Again, one of the best three point shooting teams in their conference. Lead is up to seven. Bristol Jr. looking for something to go. Rebound Jarvis. Garvey does a good job closing out on Gabaton. Bit of a dangerous time here in the second half. Bison have been tight the entire way. Offensive rebound Swain underneath the Jarvis. Blocked by the freshman Bristol Jr. And then a foul is called on Barker. I didn't even see Barber really in the mix down there, so I'm not quite sure where he did or where he even came from. I thought the Bison were about to be off to the races with the basketball. 
media timeout. It'll be Yale ball underneath when we come back. They're starting to build on their lead. Still close though, 29-22. 3.33 left to go in this first half of the Bison Sports Network. Bench. And Zion Cousins, who's already hampered by a pair of fouls, has four. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we appreciate you tuning in to this matinee contest. And we hope you're enjoying your holiday. Bison down by seven against Yale. Wow, very nice play. Quick feed underneath to Jarvis. Missed the shot. Another second chance opportunity. Gabadon from deep. That time is knocked away by Bruner. They're going to say it's off the left hand of C.J. Williams. You can see where the Bison are really missing having Zion Cousins in the game right now. The rebounding margin has become much harder for them to come by. Yeah, five offensive rebounds. Quick hands there from C.J. 20 rebounds for Yale compared to nine for Howard. Still just a seven-point game. If the Bison get a stop here, get a field goal on the other end, Feeling good about themselves, getting close to halftime. Barber clogs up the paint. Gabadon, Swain. Shot clock under 10 seconds. Eric Monroe blocked from behind by Garvey. He stepped up defensively today. That's a good timing by Garvey on that shot. A lot of people get a foul call because the timing is typically off as the Bison suffer from a turnover and Swain on the other end with the easy two. Yeah, those are the points you don't want to give up against Yale. Their lead is their biggest at nine. Be a good time for C.J. Williams basket. He's got a couple threes already. Speak him up then, Ryan. Let's see what he can do in this possession or what the Bison can do, rather. Sometimes we have that power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bristol Jr. looking for his first bucket. He's been aggressive, just nothing has dropped yet. Almost double dribbled with a shot clock down to one. Bruner, his eighth rebound already. I think in that possession, Wayne Bristol Jr. just had no awareness of how much time was left on the shot clock. The feed underneath. Williams, his second block today. They've been doing a very good job of helping the helper down there. They know Michael Barber is just not as strong as Zion Cousins down there in the post. So C.J. Williams has been doing a good job of having his back. That time, Williams drew the foul on E.J. Jarvis. You just look at this Yale team. You have Jarvis at 6'8". Atkinson at 6'10's on the bench, Jordan Bruner at 6'9". All of them are so long. It's not just that they're tall and built. They're just long and athletic. They certainly do have size. And another thing about this Yale team, I think we've seen about eight or nine bodies go in the game so far. They're deep. They can sub people in and out of the basketball game and not lose their length and their size. Atkinson and Cotton back in as C.J. Williams made the first free throw. Preseason on Miak first team. Top three in the conference in points this year. He is third all time in MIAC history in points scored, shooting about 70% from the free throw line this season. Paul Atkinson, number 10, Matthew Cotton. 
One more coming from CJ, who has seven points. Make it eight, almost halfway to his season average. And that's an area where CJ Williams has been shaky this season, is at the free throw line, only, only shooting around 68%. Just imagine if he would make more of his free throws, he would be averaging probably around 21 points per game instead of 18.6. Sure. Not to say that 18 is bad, that's great, but still. Bruner tried to put Barber on a poster. Michael played it well, but was called for the foul. As he's tried to log minutes with Zion Cousins on the bench with two fouls. And CJ feels like more of an all-around player this year. Of course, he stepped into that leadership spot as a senior and their best player. He's improved his defensive game as Bruner is at the free throw line where he is 65% this season. Jordan Brunier, the senior, such an all-around great player, 13 points, nearly 10 rebounds per game. Fifth all-time in Yale history in block shots. Coming off a season-high 23 points against Brown. Continues his strong play here today as he makes a second. 90 seconds left, Bison down by nine. Let's see if they can make it a one or two-possession game by halftime. CJ. Draws the foul on Gabadon, who bumped him going by. Great aggressiveness by C.J. Williams. You know you can't get it going from the outside, so what can I do next? Put the basketball on the ground and drive to the basket with some aggression. Williams, two more at the free throw line. Always good when you're trailing to get some points when the clock is stopped. Williams now two for three today. As the senior has got one more coming, Coach Blake D said he's really embraced that leadership role. And you can see it in his game. Every time he's out there on the floor, he's talking to his teammates, telling guys the spots that they're supposed to be in and stuff like that. So I think him embracing the leadership role has really been great for this Howard Bison team. Yale trying to win their 10th game in their past 11 contests. Gabadon connects from way downtown on the left side. Jalen Gabadon coming off a season high 12 points against Brown. And Gabadon, a player who's very experienced, but he, it, he suffered from some injuries in his first two seasons as a Yale Bulldog. So only averaging 5.4 points per game, but don't be surprised if he's you know, the face of the program sooner or later uh, going into his senior year. Foul number six on the Bison as Michael Barber picked it up. That's his second. Not a bad foul, though. Was able to prevent the easy two from the big post player, Atkinson. Down low to Atkinson. Mm. That was on Torre as he prevented the dunk. We'll take that though. Keeping the easy two from Atkinson. I agree, since Atkinson is a 68% free throw shooter, you rather him go to the free throw line and make him earn it the hard way than give up an easy slam. Big thanks to our Spotlight student production team. Doing a great job with the coverage today of this Martin Luther King Jr. day game between Yale and Howard. 37-25, the biggest lead so far for Yale. Bison were winning for most of those first 10 minutes and then the three started falling for Yale. They're shooting 44% and are up by 13. Garvey, this is a big if it goes. Barber the rebound. About a six second difference between shot and game clock. Foster has five off the bench. The runner, not quite enough on it. It will stay with the Bison and they can take the rest of this first half with 12.4 left. And that's a good job by Foster to stick with it. He missed a little floater. Great shot in the lane, by the way. Um, but just sticking with the play to give the Bison a chance to score before this halftime. Foster. Almost took that three. Williams will hold as he works on Gabaton. Williams from straight on. Look good. 
just a bit too strong. And the first half comes to an end. Bison hung in there for a while, but it is Yale in control as we go to halftime. I think the Bison did a good job. It's so crazy because you didn't realize how quickly that Yale took the lead because the Bison were playing such good basketball at the time. We'll see how Howard comes out in the second half. We'll break with them and come back in 15 on the Bison Sports Network.
Bikes and huddle with Coach Blake Dan as they get set for the second half of action. Trailing Yale by a 38 to 25 score after hanging tight through most of that first half. Ryan Pierce, Tykira Carter here. Tykira with the Bison huddling as a team. What's Coach Blake do you think telling them in the huddle there? I think he's telling his team, guys, you played so well in the first half. We just went a little bit cold on the offensive end of the floor. Let's get our offensive rhythm back and continue to get stops on the defense to the end of the floor, and I think we could be in a good place when it comes to the end of this basketball game. Yeah, Bison shot 31% compared to Yale's 46%. Yale is one of the better defensive teams in the country when you look at their opponent's field goal percentage, so they're a tough team to score on. Howard got off that quick start, made their first four shots. Yale fought back, took the lead, built upon that, and now lead 38 to 25 as we start the second half. Paul Atkinson led all scores with 13 points in that first half. He's double teamed in the post. Sign Cousins playing with a pair of fouls is back in. Swain connects from deep his second three-pointer today. Well, that's what you can't let happen. Okay, we're gonna try to shut down Atkinson and force him to kick the basketball out. Then you have to have a high contest on those threes when the kickouts are coming. Azar Swain, his second three today. He's averaging three per game as Foster has it, and now Williams, who scored nine points in that first half. A little bit off from the senior Garfi, somehow Cousins was able to tip it in. That's a good tip in by Cousins, but also he has to be mindful of the fouls, be smart on the inside if you're Zion Cousins with two fouls already. Gabaton to the top, quick feed down low to Atkinson, blocked from behind by Cousins. Bison do such a good job not giving up on plays. Then Zion on the other end. A quick start to the second half. He's got four early. And that's a good feed. You get the block on one end. You bust your butt to get to the other end and get a basket over Atkinson. That's a great job by Zion Cousins. But we know he's going to bring that to the floor each time he's out there. Eight points for Cousins. If he can just stay out of foul trouble, he'll be in great shape. This time there is a foul call. Let's see who it's on. It will be on Cousins. That is his third. I'm guessing Coach Blinkney will let Zion just play it out here in the second. I just don't think that's smart by Cousins to leave his feet on that. Just stay straight, wall up, hand straight up in the air, and he'll put himself in a better position to not foul. Paul Atkinson, 15 points today to lead all scores, along with three rebounds. Make it 16. Lead back to 13 as Lee comes in for Robinson. Paul Atkinson, so good. Already at his season average, 16.2 points per game. And he just plays a lot of minutes for this Bulldogs team. Earlier on in the season, the Bulldogs, they go on a battle against Siena. They played against played in three overtimes. Paul Atkinson played 50 minutes. Wow. Crazy. As an opposing team, as Williams is able to keep control, now in trouble. Gabaton pressured him tightly. 12 to shoot, Garvey rims it out. As an opposing team, when you come in and you see Twin Towers like Atkinson and Bruner, what's your first thought? <laughs> your first thought is, wow, what are we going to do as a team to stop these two players? It's not leave one person on an island, it's team defense, team basketball really to try to slow these two guys down. Bruner forced into a tough shot on that last possession. Bison down by 14. Lee, open look from three. Bristol Jr., the rebound, the putback. Wayne Bristol Jr. on the board. Very good job Wayne being patient, Bristol getting the two defenders Jr. up in the air, and that's something that uh, the Bison have to continue to do, shot fake, and get them jumping and then go up for it. Alley oop to Atkinson. Cousins avoids the foul. Atkinson. 19 for Atkinson. He's got 19 of his team's 45. Their leading scorer, averaging about 16 per game. Top five in the Ivy League in that category. Williams. Garvey. Bodies up against Swain. Cousins put back, and he was wrapped up. At the wrist by Bruno. And that's a good job. That's something that Cousins brings to the table, just continuing to go after the basketball and after the play. His hustle is unmatched. Cousins putting together another strong performance. Eight points 
four rebounds in limited minutes with three fouls. And you always have to think what could be with when Cousins gets into foul trouble because he's that good of a basketball player. Perfect sits on the bench for a long same. time when he gets into I'm foul trouble. And, uh, you know, that could kind of hinder your numbers when you're not out there. Four double-doubles this season. A little bit short on that free throw, though. Maybe a bit of a breeze blew in. <laughs> yeah, swipe the ball a little bit to the left <laughs> and then out of bounds. <laughs> He's got nine points, does Cousins, already past his season average. Bison trying to stop a seven-game losing streak against a really good Yale team, though. That has won nine of their past ten. This could be a Yale group as Bruner misses. That will give team fits if they can make the NCAA tournament at the end of the year. I agree. Those are one of the teams that will come in and give you a problem. A lot of upset alerts if Yale can make it into that NCAA tournament. Garvey the steal from Bruner. He's looking for Cousins. Bristol hit the floor and now Garvey's in trouble. All right, that was a little wacky play. Bodies flying in transition. People just falling on the ground. Some legs, legs tangled. And now CJ on Gabadon. Gabadon gets some help. Forces the awkward shot. Swain out in transition. Tries to sidestep Lee and maneuvers for two. That's what you don't want to happen. The Bison not being able to set up their zone where they're most effective. They have to start getting something going on the offensive end so they can get back and set up that zone that they've been running so well. Equally their biggest lead so far. Yale's up by 15. Bison's biggest lead was 9-4 early. They made their first four shots. Says Garvey connects. Defense. Garvey with five. Defense. Like Tykera said, Bison can set up that 2-3 now where they've been so effective this season. Swain looking for his third three. Cousins the rebound. Good job by Cousins being in position to hauling it in. I think a lot of the time rebounding when you're on the defensive floor is about positioning as Ian Lee almost got the ball poked away there. Eric Monroe just missed the steal. Here's Bristol, and he was pushed by Swain. The second foul on the Bulldogs in this half, and that will lead us to immediate timeout. Bison trying to find some momentum. Still only down by 13 with 15-11 left to go on the Bison Sports Network. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Bison trail the Bulldogs 47 to 34. Howard is hanging in there trying to mount a comeback here and pick up a big non-conference win, their third matchup this season against an Ivy League opponent. They played Harvard well earlier in the year. Lost a hard-fought game against a really good Penn team and now trail Yale by 13 points. Real quick, want to shout out our Spotlight student production team. They're doing a great job today with this telecast, and we appreciate you, the fan, watching as well on this very important historic Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Ryan Pierce, Tykira Carter. Tykira, over this next four or five minutes, what are some things you think the Bison can maybe do to try to make this a little bit of a closer game? I think that they can get something going consistently on the offensive end of the floor. It can't be every three possessions that you score a bucket. Every one to two, they should be trying to get to the hoop and score, maybe get something going at the free throw line, or just connecting field goal-wise. Coach Blakeney brings in one of their better shooters to do just that, Kyle Foster. Bristol Jr. to Foster with five to shoot. Kyle recognizes it. Beats Cotton and had it stolen away. Well, that's what you can't do. Turn the basketball over and live ball turnovers at that, Ryan. It doesn't even give you a chance to get yeah. back. And that's just too easy for this very good Bulldogs team. That's, I think, a big difference people sometimes forget about 
not every turnover is equal. There's the ones that lead to stoppages in play, and there are ones like that that lead to quick, fast break points. Absolutely. A layup is going to be easier than setting up your offense any day of the week, and I'm sure the Bulldogs are happy when the Bison throw the basketball away when it's live because it does lead to those easy opportunities. Wasn't a bad look from Robinson. Cotton on Cousins, and an offensive foul is called by the far official. It looks like there was some eye contact between the referees. They were trying to decide who the foul was on. It is called on Cotton, thankfully, for the Bison. Okay, yeah. At first, I saw one referee um, was calling a block, and then the other one was, you know, whistling for that offensive foul. But that's something that Cousins does so well is step in and take those charges. He already has three fouls. The Bison want to come back here. They need Zion Cousins on the floor. Howard trying to cut a seven-game losing streak and end it. They've been close in their past couple of games. What Blakeney says is about finishing. Right now, they need to make a comeback, and that's a good way to start. Nate Garvey, the tip in, he's got seven. Very great tip in by Garvey. Another thing, just being in the right place at the right time to afford your team some points around the basket. Give credit to Yale coach James Jones, not really harping on the officials in that last call, as Cotton splashes in the three. Matthew Cotton continues the strong play off the bench. He's been having a great game. Something that I would like to see the Bison do, C.J. Williams, although he has nine points, I want to see more from him in this second half. We know how great of a scorer he is and how important he is to the Bison offense, uh, but I don't feel as though he's been getting the touches that he needs in the offensive end of the floor the past few possessions. Cotton, back-to-back -back triples. He's having one of his better games of the season. That release is so pure. It is, it really is. And uh, the Bison might be surprised of the game that the sophomore is having right now for Yale. And Cotton, he's made tremendous jumps in his career already. Only a sophomore, his jumps from a freshman to a sophomore in minutes have been great. Averaging 7.3 points per game off the bench and having an afternoon here. Cotton's one of those players for the Bulldogs. When you talk with the media teams and cover this Yale roster, they say, look, they lost four players from last year, a team that made the NCAA tournament. They won the Ivy League tournament and had a share of the regular season title. They lost four important players. And a lot of people were wondering, will they still have the firepower coming to this season? But guys have stepped up. Matthew Cotton is one of them, and he's having one of his better games this season. I think just having the experience Playing under four players who had that prior experience as well really helps you out. As a freshman, looking up to those older players, your juniors and your seniors, and even the sophomores, really just all the older players on the team and kind of feeding off of their energy and the experience that they've gotten to have over you can really help you as you continue to go on in your playing career while you're a college basketball player. And I'm guessing I know the Bison think they have it with Coach Blakey, a, a leader that can be around the program for decades. But having a guy like James Jones, the head coach for Yale, he's been around for two decades, 20 years since uh, 1999. And having somebody like that as a leader, I'm sure when seniors graduate helps continue the continuity. I believe so too. It's about building a rich culture and it's about establishing something that can continue to live on. Coach James Jones, he's probably been in every basketball scenario that you can think of because he's <laughs> he's been around so long. Three overtimes against Siena. I mean, come on now. He's probably been in a lot of different situations. Foster's got a look off the pick and connects. Kyle has two threes today. More of that from Kyle Foster. He has such a pure jump stop, jump shot, especially off the bounce. Foster with eight points. Williams has nine to lead the Bison. Nobody's in double figures yet. It's been a balanced scoring attack as Swain is short, but an offensive rebound put back. Cousins the board. Bison catch a break. Garvey quickly up the floor from 10. Yes, five. Quick point for the Bison to cut this lead down to 14. Great decision by Nate Garvey, knowing I can't go up in there against Atkinson, but what I can do is shoot this little baby jumper around the rim to give the Bison that easy two. I'm sure Coach appreciates this. He calls timeout. Your team responds with five points. But on the other end, Yale just doesn't miss many open looks. Eric Monroe connecting with his second triple. Eric Moreau, such a solid player, a team captain, somebody who's going to go out there and get his team in line as well. 
Foster long on the response. Cousins the tip. Oh no. And he picks up the over the back foul. Yeah, he, he just has to be smart about that. We know that he's an active basketball player, but what do they do now? They have to put uh, another player in the basketball game in face of adversity when Zion Cousins does get into those types of situations. Luane Richardson, six foot ten, the only player on this Bison team that could match Paul Atkinson in his size will check in. Bison trailing a timeout on the floor. We'll take one with them. It's Bison basketball, the Bison Sports Network. That's the first over. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Bison trail the Bulldogs 58 to 41. Zion Cousins, big storyline, is now on the bench with four fouls. And the Bulldogs, the second best three-point shooting team in the Ivy League are starting to heat up with four three-pointers in this second half. All right, shooting 38%, something that we talked about is that they won't stay quiet for long, so the sure. Bison have to make sure they're offensive rebound into basketball, which is something that they've been able to do better. But I think it's almost inevitable for these Bulldog teams to just not get going from beyond the arc. The freshman from Florida, Luane Richardson's checked in in the middle. Offensive rebound off the long miss for Gabaton. Jamil Alausa is also in for Yale. So a couple players for both these teams that don't see a ton of minutes getting some action. Monroe splits the double team. Robinson knocked it away. Here comes C.J. Williams. Richardson grabs the ball back to Williams, creates some space and draws a foul. I think that will go against Alausa. That is allows us first, and CJ earns a trip to the free throw line. And maybe this will get CJ going. We haven't seen much of him in this second half. CJ Williams only with nine points. And for some people, you know, that's a great game sure. having nine points. But we know the force that CJ Williams is capable of on the offensive end of the floor. Williams averaging 18. He has one more coming. That's second in the MIAC. The third all-time score in MIAC history, the all-time leading score here at Howard. It goes one for two on that trip. Garvey is able to hustle the rebound. Foster's open. Foster steps in. Thought Kyle was going to pull the trigger there. Yeah, Ryan, there's such thing as a little bit of too much ball movement, and I think on that possession was it. Foster's a guy that's hot. You get the rebound, you have an open shot, shoot the basketball. I think he's capable of knocking that shot down, which he has proved to do uh, since he's been getting some more minutes for the Bison. Foster almost got the offensive rebound. Monroe on the other end finds Matthew Cotton. He's been the X factor today for the Bulldogs. A player that doesn't get a, a ton of action is really playing well. He is, and he's one point off of his season high that he had, or his career high rather, that he had against San Francisco when he scored 16 points earlier in the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if he beats that career high today. Williams hustles to get back. Cotton's open from the left baseline. This time can't connect. Garvey able to save the basketball. Bison down by 19. It's their biggest deficit so far. With 9.57 left, if Howard's going to make a run, it's going to have to start now. Robinson fresh off that 12-point game. He's got a couple today. With that layup, his first field goal. 
Robin. Uh, nice take, patience, and I think a even better screen by Luane Richardson. Some people underestimate the power of what a good screen could do for a guard making their way into the lane. Bruner had a shot blocked by Richardson. Richardson thought he got all ball. It is the eighth, rather the, uh, it looks like the second foul on Howard, the first on Richardson. And Bruner's at the free throw line. What a player he is. 13 rebounds, five points. He impacts the game in so many ways. Their third leading score connects on the first free throw. Yeah, he's just an all around player, um, like you said before. Impactful on the inside, shot blocker, getting rebounds, doing a lot of different things for the Bulldogs. He's such a big component of their offense and defense. Leads the Ivy League in rebounds. A phenomenal shooter for his size, connects on a pair. Lead back to 19 for the Bulldogs. Lee from the elbow. Rebound tipped around a couple of times. Bristol Jr. finds it. This time Foster passes up on the three. Williams does not on the jumper and connects. DJ Williams. Williams with 12. He leads all Bison scores. Six off his season average. As Yale is going for their 10th win in their last 11 games. Alausa. And a foul is called. It looks like it'll go against, once again, Richardson. And that's something that the bigs have to work on for the Howards. Bison team. Michael Barber came in, got two quick fouls. Zion Cousins knows better, but opts to jump when he should stay on his feet with four fouls. And now Lewayne Richardson picks up two easy fouls. Probably has only been in the game for around two to three minutes, so that's something that they need to work on. The last basket by C.J. Williams put him in second place all time in the MIAC in points scored. So C.J. continues to climb up that ladder. Now the second all-time leading score. What an incredible accomplishment for Williams. As Alausa has one more coming here. And congratulations to C.J. Williams. That is such an accomplishment. Um, passing Delaware State's Tom Davis, who was third all-time in MEAC scoring, and now hopping into that second place alongside um, Coppin State's Dwayne McKee, who was first all time in scoring in the MEAC. So, congratulations to CJ Williams for that accomplishment. MEAC fans will remember those players, and now Williams' name goes alongside them. Bristol Jr., the freshman, tickles the net. He's got a couple field goals today as Howard is trying to play even with the Bulldogs. Downtown by 16. He's a DK is in at point. Gabaton lets Bristol Jr. fly by and then throws it down from the right baseline. And that's a big boy flush right there. Gabaton really got up there for that one alongside the baseline. And a holding foul is called as Barber went to set the pick. It's on DK. And Barber is not an easy guy to dunk on at six foot nine. Gabadon with those long arms was able to get over the top. And Gabadon, he's not even really a player that's looking to score the basketball, right? He plays his role. He does the little things perfectly. And for him to get that flush, that's a nice job by Gabadon. As Kyle Foster does a nice job on the offensive end for the Bison with another triple. Foster back-to-back -back games with three threes. He now has 11 points. That's a good sign. Then the trap almost got the steal. Unfortunately, the rim is wide open, and DK takes advantage. You know what? Those are the kind of plays I think as a coach you don't mind because your team's hustling. They just got unlucky. Yeah, that was just a tough one. They were playing hard. Uh, you know, when you miss the steal, you know that somebody else is bound to be open. It's a gamble, and yeah. uh, you know, a risk that the Bison took on that particular possession. Bison take a timeout. Down by 17, outside of a couple of runs. Howard has played pretty tight with Yale, but they trail 68 to 51 with 7.30 left to go on the Bison Sports Network.
Bison down by 17 on Martin Luther King Jr. Day against the Yale Bulldogs, one of the best teams in the Ivy League, one of the top 60 teams in the country. And the Bison trail by 17 after leading early. So announcing now, Virgin Mason, that's C.J. Williams, the second all-time leading scorer in the NEAC Conference. Tykira, you know, looking at the numbers, is there one or two? I know we've talked about rebounds and field goal percentage. Maybe those are it, but there are one or two numbers that kind of stand out to you with the Bison down by 17. Now 15 after Williams knocks down the deep two. Uh, I think something that really sticks out to me so far is the points off of turnovers. Um, the Bulldogs have been able to score. Let me get, let me get my stat right. They've been able to score. That's something that's kind of surprising, too, for Howard. They mm -hmm. had the best assist to turnover numbers in the MEAC as mm -hmm. Bristol Jr. skies to the rim after a good defensive stand for Howard. And he's got a couple free throws coming up. The Bison can chip into this lead a little bit. There's still time, 6.52 against Yale. Howard down by 15. If Bristol Jr. can knock down these free throws, maybe get a three, that makes it a 10-point 10 10 game. So I have my stat ready, right? Okay. But I saw something that was far more glaring than that. Points in the paint. Yeah. The Bulldogs are outscoring the Bison 28 to 14 in the paint. That's a big difference now. Huge difference, and you think, okay, the Bulldogs are a big team that's going to happen, but they also shoot the three ball really well. It's a complete yes. offense. Yes. So I think that stat is far more glaring. Yes, that will happen, but then you start knocking down down threes shooting 37 percent and that's not even particularly great but when you put into perspective that Howard is only shooting 28 percent from the three then that yeah. does make a difference and you can understand why the margin is so large 70 to 55. Easy or easy a DK drove the foul and got the bucket to go off of the full court press from Howard he can bump this lead back up to 16. The Bison want to pull off a, a, an incredible comeback. Those threes are going to have to start to drop. Mm -hmm. They do have Foster and Williams and Bristol Jr. out there. They're top three three-point shooters. Robinson. Cousins playing with four fouls. Foster nice. may have got away with steps. Williams keeps it, tosses it up. Atkinson Jr., the rebound. Williams was trying to go, draw the contact right there, but I think had he gone straight up, perhaps he would have gotten the foul and the bucket, uh, you know, sometimes going straight into the defender's body. Williams has 14, Foster has 11. Atkinson shot blocked by Cousins, who's playing with four fouls. And that's a gamble by Cousins once again, but he gets away with the block. Nice timing on Atkinson's as Khalil Robinson tries to go coast to coast and tried to save that ball he did he just saved it to the wrong team <laughs> and Williams the smart foul Atkinson had that big first half 13 points the Bison have adjusted and played him better in the second half just six accordingly though you've had different people who've had to guard him throughout this game from Lorraine Richardson to Michael Barber to Zion Cousins so they've been able to throw different bodies at him, which could be a positive point for Coach Kenneth Blakeney because he's getting different people in the rotation who don't normally play due to Zion Cousins' foul trouble that he encountered. It's the last non-conference game of the year for both these teams. For Gale, somehow they've only played one conference game, a win against Brown earlier this week. The Bison have a have conference games the rest of the way. So again, these type of games are still learning opportunities for a team as Howard tries to make a strong run in the 
lead the last 66% of the conference season. And that's what it's all about, Ryan, learning, trying to pick up um, kind of where you left off, if it's on a positive note, continuing to build as a team and as a program. Um, as Coach Kenneth Blakeney is only in his first year as Paul Atkinson, oh, another man. bucket. 21 for this evening, or this afternoon, rather. Lead spikes to 18. Cousins trying to be careful there, has four fouls. Williams bumped and a foul's called, and CJ will go to the free throw line for a one and one. Um, I'm CJ, this is an area that I'm really going to focus in, um, you know, being mindful of this basketball game, cool win or loss, but in the MEAC, we've seen it's been a lot of to tight and close contests, and a lot of them will come down to free throw shooting, so him being a leader and a person who can get to the free throw line a lot, I think it's very pivotal to his success and for the team's success that he's knocking down those free throws. Yeah, Williams missed that one. He and Foster have combined for 25 of the Bison's 55 points. Bruner looking for the triple. That shot is so smooth, six foot nine. He leads the Ivy League in boards and he can hit shots like that. He's so good, just so versatile, so hard to guard. Uh, you don't know if he's gonna pick and pop and shoot that three or get you stuck on the inside. Bristol Jr., the response on the other end. And I like the response for the rookie, Wayne Bristol Jr. You struggle in your last outing and coming in here, really not playing your best offensive basketball, but still keeping your head up and being able to respond is huge. Howard keeping up the effort as Gavadon skies in for the tip. Jalen Gavadon. Lead is 20. Robinson, off balance shot, somehow saved it. Open Bristol, back to back threes for the freshman. We're just gonna say Khalil Robinson, he meant to do that. That is how it was, it was all drawn up, Ryan. That was the play. If that is a move Robinson has, he should go to it more often. That was impressive. Yeah, he psyched everybody out. Swain, getting his own rebound. Williams on the weak side, CJ. The Euro step, a little bit off balance on the pass. Right idea, very right idea. Your shooter, Kyle Foster, is in the corner. You see him there getting set up just a little bit off. We've reached a media timeout. Bison trailing by 20 on the Bison Sports Network with 3.56 left to go. And down by 17, 78 to 61, 356 left. It was first ever meeting between Howard and Gale. Big thanks to our Spotlight student production team doing a great job today. Good sized crowd here at Purdue Gymnasium. They've seen Howard really put up a good fight against the Yale team. Top three team in the Ivy League. They're huge. They have multiple players that are 6'9 or taller. A really talented group. It is a really talented group. You have three players that score in double figures. Night in and night out. Oh, that was an awesome play drawn up perfectly as Kelly gets the flush on the other end of the floor for the Bulldogs. And you see their, their coach can do things yeah. like that out of timeout, like we've talked about his experience in his 21st season at the helm for the Bulldogs. So it's just a very versatile squad, having people who could know their roles, whether they're starting or coming off the bench. Cousins to Williams, and then a foul is called on Kelly. You know, that play's not too bad. You'd rather have that happen when you're down by 17 points late in a non-conference game than a close game in a, against a conference opponent. Howard can look at the tape.
Coach Blake, you can see what happened there and say, okay, guys, here's what you don't want to do when you're running a full court press. I want to steal that play, too. I like the way that was. <laughs> Add that one into the arsenal. Sure. <laughs> that was a nice one. But when you're playing in that full court press and you let a person get behind you, you saw that Kelly was able to just come off a curl and they were able to launch it down court for that open basket. Very nicely done. Principal Onosiki is in for the first time today. As Crystal Jr. will check out. And Jones is in for him. Crowd gave a nice hand to Zion Cousins and C.J. Williams and Nate Garvey when they checked out moments ago. And well-deserved. Their effort is always there. And that's one thing that I can say about this Bison basketball team. It's not as though they don't play hard. Look, still diving on the floor with three minutes left to go. Down, you know, near 20 points. The crowd is going crazy. And the runner is good as it's dropped in for Jones. And crowd really getting into that, supporting their team. Yeah, and you, and you gotta love it. They do play hard, and like we said, the, the basketball part, that will come, they'll get better. They feed on the other end, and a foul is called as Jake Lanford, the sophomore from Charleston, another 6'10 guy on this loaded Yale team, gets, uh, gets to the free throw line. At the line, shooting one and one. Lanford getting some playing time, averaging two points per game. 75% from the foul line in a couple of attempts this year. Earns a second on the one and one. Uh, well, put it to perspective again how well Yale can really score the basketball. This is their fifth game where they've been able to reach that 80 point margin or higher. Uh, I think that's pretty high. You're, you're shooting at a high clip. Once again, you have three players scoring and double figures, and then a, a few players coming off the bench averaging around seven to five points per game. So this team has uh, a lot of weapons. Onosiki the rebound. They do, it's a loaded team, and if you are filling out your bracket and the Yale happens to make the tournament, this is a team to keep in mind as a Cinderella. As Foster, four threes today. That is a major silver lining. He's got seven threes in his past two games. He's been really shooting the basketball well, and he should keep that up. Uh, you know, it definitely makes a difference. Jarvis, tight ropes the baseline, and he did get a toe on it as the Bison force a turnover. Uh, speaking of Cinderella's, I'll choose Yale. Let them sneak into the tournament. That that would be my sleeper pick. Sure. And I don't even think it's a sleeper, Ryan, because of the teams that they went up against and competed against and showed that they're capable of not only competing against, but winning as Kyle Foster back-to-back -back triples. Once again, he's just shooting the basketball so well. Foster getting the crowd into it. His fifth three. How about this crowd? They're hanging around. They're rooting on the Bison. They recognize the effort. DK tries to respond and does. Big triple from DK. Certainly, this has been like a three-point shooting contest, right? The bench has come in and put on a show. Right. Bulldogs up by 13. Torre throws it down. And then some trash talking with Torre is called for the technical foul. You know, I, I think you let him play on that one. It's 135 yeah. left in the game, Ryan. It, it's, it's just a little fun. It's some trash talking. You're supposed to do that after you get a poster. Uh, I don't think Andre Torre, in my opinion, he didn't do anything wrong. I, I like that. I like when you get pretty. You're, you're playing basketball. Bison have it down to 11. I mean, they quietly made this into a competitive game. There is only 95 seconds left. And a timeout is taken by Coach James Jones. And it'll be interesting to see what Coach Blakeney says to Torre, who's played a good game. With Andre's battled injuries throughout this season, uh, he, he was a guy we thought could be starting. He's had a hard time getting to the rotation. He's had a good game. That emphatic slam picked up the technical. I think Coach will say, look, we appreciate your intensity. Let's kind of 
maybe keep things a little more chill if possible. <laughs> yeah, and I get it. I understand it. I think that basketball is such an emotional game, though. And for this Bison team, they've been down in the dumps, losing basketball game after basketball game. You need some sort of excitement that makes you get up and feel good about what you're doing and the effort that you're putting out there on the floor, which is why I'm not opposed to you know, getting in somebody's face a little bit. But as the rest, you do have a job to protect the players on the opposing team sure. or in any situation. So I do understand where the technical came from. But when I played a little bit, you know, I had some sneaky trash talking going on. Maybe you couldn't imagine that, but yeah. <laughs> Again, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. What a historic day. Award. Two historic teams making their first a game against each other. It's uh, Howard trailing by 11 and a technical free throw coming up here for Williams. Well, let's put this into perspective, Ryan. 135 left to go in the game. If they don't get that technical foul, perhaps, and if the free throw isn't a thing, maybe the Bison could have gotten a steal sure. and a layup and cut it to nine. You never know. Then the, the question comes in, do you bring back in starters if you're both teams and try to see what happens in the end? But Williams does connect on the free throw. And he's got one more coming. An area where Yale has really excelled from the free throw line, 14 for 18, 77.8%. Um, so they, they, they're pretty good at free throw shooting. 85-73, the lead is 12 with 135 left. Yale is led by as much as 21. A right, flurry of threes by Kyle Bay. Foster here in these final minutes. Both teams have uh, some players that normally come off the bench on the floor. As Howard trying to get this maybe into single digits. DK. Baseline pass to Lanford. It's taken away by Foster. With 117 left, Foster out to lead. This makes it a nine point game. Put back no good and land for the rebound. Uh, good effort on the boards and a put back. Might have made it interesting if he, uh, Ian Lee had knocked that three mm -hmm. down right there. DK in the front court. And now Yale will slow down the tempo. And a foul is called on a CK. That's a player that picked up some minutes last year. And he hasn't found his way to the rotation for Coach Blakeney this season. That's a big body, number 35, Anu CK, that could be valuable if he can kind of figure out what his role is with this team. It is, and it's always tough when you go through a coaching change where you might have been playing more minutes in the season sure. before, and maybe you just don't particularly fit the style that Coach Kenneth Blakeney is looking for. But adapting and changing, so it'll be interesting to see how Anu CK can come on and if he can sneak some more minutes um, into the Bison's lineup. Blakeney, Coach Blakeney and company, it's all conference game from here on out. A solid performance against Yale today. It looks like they will come up short though. Bison got off to a 9-4 lead and then kind of got cold from the field. Yale caught fire and a foul is called on Williams and Foster to the free throw line. Wow, Foster, if he can knock these two down, have 21 points on this afternoon. That's a very great performance, especially coming off the bench. Sure. Need more play like that from the players who are reserves. Kyle Foster, the junior from Hampton. 15 points against Morgan State. He's got 19 today. One of the better free throw shooters on this team. And big thanks to our Spotlight student production team. Great job today as Foster sinks the first free throw. 20 for him. And he is the kind of player who, if he gets hot, can change games towards conference tournament time. It's about him being focused and just smart off of the bench. Like we said, um, dynamic scorer could shoot the three ball like no other when he has that confidence and goes in knowing his role. So. Uh, we we'll like to continue to see Kyle Foster have that hot streak. Yale is on the verge of winning 10 games in their last 11 contests. Their only loss, a nail biter to the University of North Carolina. This team is smoking hot heading into conference season. They're going to be a lot of fun to keep track of. The Bison about to lose their eighth straight, but once again, they keep things close against this time a very good Yale team. Their play is hard, they continue to improve, and you can feel maybe a streak in MIAC play is on the horizon. 
I do. I feel as though, and, and this is just I'm a firm believer in, you can't be down for too long. Sure. At some point, you're going to have to rise up. You can't keep losing games, and I think that they'll be able to uh, flip that switch. As for Yale, uh, today they made history, 12 regular season non-conference wins, which is a school record for the Bulldogs. And as for the Bison, they made history in a different way. C.J. Williams moved into second all time in the MEAC scoring list. So two teams who were able to make history on a historical MLK day. Yale able to save it. It was the first time Yale and Howard played together and I'm sure there'll be plenty more matchups. Coach Blakeney in his first season will fall today against Coach James Jones in his 20th year. But I'm sure uh, as those two share words at half court, Coach Jones will say his team played hard. And there'll be plenty more matchups between those two as the Bulldogs top the Bison, 89 to 75. Howard played them tight there towards the end. They were leading in the beginning. It was that middle part of the game this time where the Bulldogs really picked things up. What was it in that stretch, maybe towards the end of the first half, start of the second, that was the big difference for Yale compared to Howard today? Oh, wow. Yale just knocked down shots, Ryan. Uh, we kept reiterating the fact that they won't stay cold for long and they proved us exactly right they started hitting shots and transition threes second chance opportunities around the rim really pounding the basketball in the paint where the bison proved to be undersized against this bulldog team and being efficient around that rim it was a fun game the bulldogs take it 89 to 75 paul atkinson leads yale in scoring with 19 points kyle foster drops 21 for the Bison, including five three-pointers in front of a crowd that enjoyed their time here at Bird Gymnasium. Takira, final thoughts on this one? I think the Bison, they walk out of here with their heads held high per usual because they give so much effort and they play hard. And as for Yale, hope to see them in the NCAA tournament this season representing and putting on for the Ivy League. And good luck to them as they go into Ivy League play. Big thanks to you for tuning in. We appreciate your time here on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day, this historic day. We hope you're enjoying it and celebrating and having a relaxing afternoon. Big thanks to our Spotlight student production team that did a great job this afternoon. For Dakira Carter, I'm Ryan Pierce. The Bison dropped to Yale today. We'll see them back in conference action in one week at Bird Gymnasium.